Hi, I'm Sal from Arnex Make, and today I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started using SolidWorks. We'll take a look at the dog bowl stand from our first episode so you can start modeling parts with confidence. Let me close down SolidWorks so we can take this from the top. The first thing you need to know is how to start SolidWorks, and the easiest way to do that is by clicking the shortcut on your desktop. If you're a SolidWorks for Makers user though, you can go to your 3D Experience platform and click the open button on your dashboard. Once SOLIDWORKS loads, we can get started by creating a new document. And you'll see that SOLIDWORKS has three primary document types, parts, assemblies, and drawings. But before we can think about assemblies and drawings, we need to create a part. You'll notice that the interface is broken up into three major pieces. The largest of which is the graphics area, and this is where our designs will come to life. On the left hand side, we have the feature manager, which will list all of the features that we use to create our designs. Across the top, we have the command manager, and in it, you'll find all the commands that SOLIDWORKS has to offer. Let's start by creating an extrude. Creating a three-dimensional extrude starts by drawing a two-dimensional sketch, and SOLIDWORKS is asking us which plane we want to draw on. So we'll choose the top plane. You'll notice the command manager has automatically jumped to the sketch tab, and we have access now to all of our two-dimensional drawing tools. I'll start with a center point rectangle. You'll notice as I move the cursor around the screen, I start to see blue inference lines. These help me line up with things, in this case, the origin. I'm going to draw this off to the side though by clicking once to place the center and a second time to size the rectangle. Now I can continue drawing rectangles if I want, but I'm going to hit the escape key so I can continue with the design. All of the geometry you see on the screen right now is blue, and that means that the sketch is underdefined. In fact, we can look at the status bar here and see that indication. An underdefined sketch means that anything that's blue in it can be dragged. So this point is blue and it can be dragged. These lines are blue, they can be dragged. I can even drag the blue shaded area. But my goal is not to have an underdefined sketch, it's rather to have a fully defined sketch. And to fully define a sketch, you have to do two things. One is size, and two is locate. So let's start by locating this rectangle. I would like the center of this to be right on the origin. And I can grab this point because it's blue, drag it around, and when I drag it, Right to the origin, you'll see it snaps into place, and there's even that little yellow icon saying that I'm going to capture a coincident relationship. When I do that, you'll notice that the sketch starts to change color. Some of the lines have now turned black, while others remain blue. Black is the color that SOLIDWORKS reserves for fully defined sketches. These set center lines can no longer be dragged, because they are locked at the origin on their midpoints. These corners, however, are still blue. These lines are still blue. So I can still size this. To size something, we typically add dimensions. So the Smart Dimension tool is here on the Command Manager. And I'm going to turn that on and just select one of the lines. You'll notice I instantly see a preview of a dimension. I can move it around to where I like and place it by clicking and then typing a value, in this case, 19 inches. You'll notice that some more lines have now turned black. These two lines are now black because it knows the full width of this mo uh, model. I'll add one more dimension, type in a value, and you'll see now I have a fully defined sketch. Not only is everything in the screen black, but you'll see down in the status bar, it says fully defined. And this is our goal when we're designing, is to have fully defined sketches. When I'm finished with that, I can now click the confirmation corner, exit the sketch, and SOLIDWORKS automatically brings me into the extrude, and I see a three-dimensional preview. Now I have an arrow here on the screen that I can drag, I can arbitrarily pick a value, I can snap to a ruler if I'd like, but I can also come over to the property manager and type a very precise value, in this case three quarters of an inch, and see that the preview will update. Now, there's a lot of different settings here in the, in the property manager, but for getting started, a blind extrusion of a certain distance is exactly what we're going for, so I'll hit OK. Now that we have our first bit of 3D geometry on the screen, we really need to understand how to move this thing around. The middle mouse button allows us to rotate the model. If I use my mouse wheel, I can scroll in and out. If I want to pan, I can hold down the control key and my middle out mouse button, and that will pan the model left and right. If I ever find myself with the model way off the screen and not knowing where it is, I can hit the letter F on the keyboard, and that is going to zoom the model to fit, so F for fit. To finish the design, I just have to repeat that process. I'm going to now use a, an extruded cut. So just like before, SOLIDWORKS pauses and asks, where do we want to draw our sketch? And now we have all these flat surfaces upon which to draw, so I'll pick this large face. SOLIDWORKS again rotates the model, and this time I'll draw a circle. 
Just like before, I see the inference line, so I'll use that to line up and I'll click once and click a second time to size the circle and hit escape. Remember, those inference lines are only there to line things up. They don't capture actual relations. So I sometimes like to deliberately move things away so I can capture the relations that I want. I want this point and the origin to be horizontal with one another. So I'm gonna select this point and then I'm gonna hold down my control key and pick on the origin. Using the control key is how we select multiple things. You'll notice that when I select a couple things, I get a context menu that lets me pick sketch relations. So I'll make them horizontal. I can drag this again and notice I'm trying to drag it up and down. It does not move, but it will still move side to side. And now that it's located partially, I'll add some dimensions to finish the job. The same dimension tool will react to your selection. So because I chose a circle, uh, SolidWorks will give me diameters. So I'll type in a value. And then uh, once again, I'll position this left to right. Okay, so we have a fully defined sketch. If all I wanted to do was create a, a, a circular opening, I could go right uh, ahead and create the cup. But I want this to be a little bit more interesting of a sketch. I have some other shape to add over here. So I'm gonna go back to uh, using some of the other sketch tools. I'll start with a center line. A center line is just going to be a dash line that SolidWorks will use, allow me to use for reference purposes. So I'm gonna snap to this quadrant of the circle, snap to the center of the circle, and then draw a line sort of roughly where I want it. I'm going to hit escape now. And you'll notice that this line is black, it's fully defined because it's snapped to the two points. This line is blue because I just kind of arbitrarily placed it in there. Um, what I want to do though is put a proper dimension on there. So once again, I'll turn on the dimension tool and I'll make my first selection. And SolidWorks, of course, will say I can give you the length of this line, but I'll just ignore that for a minute and make my second selection and SolidWorks will automatically transition into an angular dimension. Now, before I click in place, I should pay attention to what type of dimension SolidWorks is giving me. Here, the included angle. Over here, the supplementary angle. Over here, the uh, completely opposite angle. So you've got all sorts of options here. Um, and before you place, again, make sure you're clicking when the preview looks appropriate. So I'll type in 45 degrees. That line is now fully defined. The end point of it is still blue because we haven't told SolidWorks the length of that. But honestly, right now, that's not that important. So let's go ahead and draw some other geometry. I'll pick the regular line tool. And I'm gonna start by clicking on the circle and drawing. Now you notice SolidWorks is trying to give me a tangent line and it's pretty dynamic, but I don't want a tangent line. So I'm gonna come back to the circle without clicking, just pause for a moment and you'll notice SolidWorks now gives us additional lines. I can come off perpendicular to that or still go tangent, uh, or I can use that same uh, technique of pausing on a piece of geometry to get inference lines for another piece. So I'm gonna come over to this construction line, just pause for a moment and you notice that those yellow dashed lines just rock themselves, so now I can pick up parallel to that uh, line or perpendicular to that line. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line parallel. And as I move along, you'll notice that it continues to um, give me those inference lines that I can snap to. So I'll get perpendicular, come back here, pick up perpendicular as well as coincident. Uh, I'm done drawing my shape, I'm going to hit escape. And as always, I like to grab anything that's blue on the screen and just pull it around to see how the sketch behaves. So it's behaving the way I expect in terms of the parallel and the perpendicular, but it's still not quite right. This is not symmetric about the center line. These lines are different lengths. So I'm going to select this line, hold my control key down as I did before and select the other line and make them both equal. You notice a different set of uh, suggestions this time because I chose two lines versus my other selections from before. So um, pay attention to the things that SolidWorks offers you. It'll be slightly different depending on what you've selected. Now that I've added an equal relation, I can drag this again and see the behavior is expect exactly how I expect it. Um, I'm getting that sort of symmetric behavior because of the equal constraint. Now let's pause here for a minute before we add any more dimensions and fully define this. What you're seeing is a sketch that SolidWorks is certainly perfectly capable of handling, but something you should avoid when you're first getting started. And that is, we have a shaded area, and then we have an unshaded area. And again, when you're getting started, uh, it's recommended that you always have nice, simple sketches with one closed shaded region. So I'm gonna fix that by going over to the trim entities, and we'll use the power trim, which is the default here, to simply slice away bits of the sketch. So I'm gonna uh, drag across there, and you'll notice it trimmed away that, that segment. It also 
I left nothing shaded because SOLIDWORKS doesn't know what to do with this just yet. But I'll tr trim away that piece. And again, you'll see that SOLIDWORKS can, uh, can understand that it's one full shaded profile. And this again is sort of the best practice when you're first getting started with SOLIDWORKS. Let's go ahead and add the remaining dimensions and we can finish up this, uh, this cut extrude. So I'm gonna select this line. Something slightly different, when you're dimensioning lines that are at an angle, you'll notice depending on where you move your mouse, just like with that angle dimension, SOLIDWORKS will give you different solutions. So I get the horizontal, the vertical, or the exact length. So um, if you don't like this behavior where it's jumping around as you move, you can find the orientation you like and then just right click. And now as I move, it doesn't uh, jump around anymore. So it'll allow you to put the dimension where you want it without fighting that orientation. So we'll make that two inches. Same thing here, this dimension, uh, again, to, fight, to stop that, that jumping, right click and place it. Okay, once again, everything's black, status bar says fully defined. We're ready to make this into our cut extrude. So I'll exit the sketch. I'll rotate my model just so I can see things a little bit better. And again, we see the preview. We see we're going a blind distance of three quarters of an inch, but this is where I wanna call your attention to these end conditions. When you're making a cut, it's often the case where you want it to always go through the entire thickness of the model. And that's why we have this thing called through all. This allows you to not have to worry about typing a value. The SOLIDWORKS will always figure out how far to go. This is great for when you make changes in, in, the, uh, in the future and make instead of a three quarters of an inch board, you make it two inches thick. SOLIDWORKS will automatically cut through that two inches because of this end condition. So let's take a look at what we've accomplished so far. We have a, an emboss extrude, a cut extrude, and we have a couple sketches. So far, all we've done is create what are called sketch-based features. There are other features that don't require sketches, and they're called applied features. Let's start with the fillet. The fillet command, even though it's got a lot going on about it, the basic things it needs is things to fillet and then the size of the actual fillet. So we're gonna pick this edge here, and I'm gonna go here and pick this other edge and type in a value, and you can see that SOLIDWORKS is applying this fillet, or a round, to, to ease the, the corner. So those are not hard uh, corners anymore. So that feature you can see in the feature manager doesn't have a sketch under it because it just gets applied to the model. The mirror feature is another type of applied feature, and it wants to know what is the plane about which you want to mirror, and what are the things that you want to mirror. Now we can't see the planes just yet, but if we use our flyout feature manager by expanding it here, we can see the feature manager and all of its uh, contents here. And if we hover over, we see the dynamic preview that lets us see that the right plane, sure enough, is the plane about which we want to mirror. And we can jump over here to where it says features to mirror and just start picking the things that we want to mirror. So I'm gonna pick on the, the hole and you can see sort of a preview of, of what's happening, but we don't wanna mirror just the hole. We also wanna mirror the fillet. And you can see the preview looks a little more complete now and we can hit okay. So now we've got a nice symmetric model. The last thing I'm gonna do is apply one more fillet and show you that as you make your selections, if you pause for a moment, you can see there's a heads up toolbar that's helping us make some accelerated selections. If I hover over here, it'll pick a similar edge on that, uh, on that cutout. The next one over gets the similar edges on the other cutout as well. And if I go down the line, it gets even more edges by considering the outside. So take a moment to, to always look at this uh, accelerated uh, selection helper because it will help you uh, reduce the number of clicks that you have to do inside SOLIDWORKS. I'm gonna type in the more appropriate value here and then click OK. If you followed along up until this point, and this is the first time you've ever modeled something in SOLIDWORKS, take a minute. Acknowledge that you just made something with a brand new skill, and that's awesome. But now that we're done celebrating, we forgot to do one really important thing, and that is save our design, right? If we look at the top bar here, it says part one, and there's an asterisk next to it. And that star or asterisk means that the model has to be saved. We can also look at the 3D Experience My Session tab, and you'll notice that here, there's also a status that says this file is new. So we have to save this to the 3D Experience platform or to this PC. To do that, of course, we can just click the save button, and then we just need to give it a name and click save. When the part is saved, you'll see that the top bar now reflects the file's name and the status in the My Session tab updates as well. Let's now close the document because we're going to need to learn how to reopen it in the future. The easiest way to do that is to click on the welcome icon and access the recent content. 
you'll see that the file is there and you can just click on it to open it. Alternatively, you can click on the open button and access your content either from the 3D Experience platform or from your PC. Now that we've opened the document, let's make some changes. You can change anything that you've created by selecting the item in the Feature Manager and clicking the Edit icon. When you change sketch dimensions, you'll notice that they update immediately. You can also double click on a feature to expose its dimensions. When you make changes this way and hit Enter, the model does not automatically update. Instead, you'll see a little rebuild light on the feature in the Feature Manager. There's a Rebuild button in the Command Manager and clicking on that will let the model update. Let's take a minute to make this look a little more visually interesting. The Appearances tab of the Task Pane gives us access to a wide variety of materials that we can apply to our designs. Just drag and drop it onto your model. With the model looking good, we'll save it one more time and we'll call this part complete. Okay, I just gave you a ton of information and the truth is there's a ton more to learn, but I believe in you and I'll be here to help you learn more over time. For now, you can watch this video again or you can check out the videos that SolidWorks has created to get you started. Just click the Welcome button and then go to the Learn tab and check out the Getting Started videos as well as the 3D Experience EDU learning portal. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on our next make. Thank you.